Hello again everyone, it is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com and I've been getting repeated requests for an update on the giant Baleo that you can see behind me. So without any further delay, let's get into it. All right, so there has been quite a bit of progress uh, on this boat. Maybe not as much as what I'd like, but we got the business to run here as well. But I wanna share with you some of the cool things that we've got going on. We're gonna start at the front of the boat and I'll show you what we've got going on. Um, you've already seen the fact that we have these servos, but you may see some new things in this forward section. We've got a pneumatic um, actuator here, a pneumatic valve. And these are all Robart parts. As you can see, there's a, a Robart pressure vessel hiding underneath there. And this is the pneumatic subsystem. Now, right now, the only thing that it is actually doing is raising and lowering the periscope. But this already uh, is here and in place. So you could, for example, put uh, an actuator in here to open and close the torpedo shutters uh, or that kind of thing. The way that it's set up, this is actuated via the retract servo. So this is the bow retract servo. But more than that, really, it's, it's sort of a dive state servo. Right now, it's in the dive state. And uh, as such, the periscope is raised and the forward dive planes are deployed. So that is like submerged or ready to submerge state. You could also, like I said, plumb this in so that the torpedo shutters open in the submerged or ready to submerge state. So lots of flexibility there, but uh, right now that's the only thing that these are driving. I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna jump to a, a video of the periscope working here so you can take a look at what that is. It's pretty smooth, uh, needs a little bit of oil, but um, it, all in all, it's working really, really well and really reliably. Now the other thing we've got going on here, uh, again, this is a dive state servo, we have a waterproof limit switch. So what happens when the servo moves to the retracted position, it depresses this switch. And what this is, there's actually two things that it's doing right now. It uh, is locking and unlocking the bow plane servo. So when the planes are deployed, this servo is fully powered and uh, you can adjust the pitch of the boat. But when the planes are retracted, power's cut to the servo and uh, you can't move it, so it won't damage any linkages up there. So it's a solid state way uh, of doing it. And the reason we did that is because the bow plane interlock unit that we offer here at the dry docks is not currently compatible with the 2.4 gigahertz radios that we are going to be using in here. Um, moving towards the back, this is all stuff that you've kind of seen before. We've got the mounting plate for the electronics uh, compartment, which I'll show you in a moment. This is the uh, fill port for the pneumatic system. So you just basically hook up the little pump, um, give it some uh, pumps. It likes to work at or above 40 PSI, uh, but I believe the system's rated to well over 100. So uh, you'll get lots of cycles in there. Uh, ballast tank with the emergency gas blow system inside, our big 10 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. This is the gas backup system that I demonstrated in my earlier video, and I'll put a link to that so that you guys can see it if you haven't already. It's a big pressure vessel um, that you can use as a, as a secondary ballast blow. Rear um, ballast tank, and then we've got our motor compartment. These are the, the connections that's gonna power the air pump, that's gonna purge the ballast tanks, and our main drive motors. Now we're getting in to the really cool stuff. Uh, you can see these ports. And uh, if you're familiar with the, the Gato and Baleo class submarines, you'll know what these are. Uh, and if you don't, these are exhaust ports. There's four of them, one for each of the four diesel engines that powered this boat on the surface. One thing that I wanted to play around with that to the best of my knowledge, nobody has managed to engineer is a functioning smoke exhaust system in a submerging submarine. So this is what we've got going on right now. In theory, it's gonna work. So uh, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that that's the case. We'll, we'll have to wait until we get to a swimming pool 
to actually find out. We've got our rear servos for our rudders and dive planes, but this is the smoke system heart and soul. So there's a waterproof compartment in there. There's a voltage regulator that's supplying power to it. And there are two independent smoke generators inside, one for each side, left and right. Kind of like the big boat would actually have had. Um, mounted up on the top here is the intake, the air intake for the pumps that blow the air out through these tubes. The idea behind this is when the boat is surfaced, as it would be right now, this is above the water, it would sit something like this. So the water is pushing up on this, um, keeping it level here, but it's, it's open. When the boat submerges, this foam float on the back raises, blocks off the intake so no water will get into the compartment and uh, flood it. That's what is gonna happen in theory. We'll see if it actually works out that way. At this point, I th I'm sure you're super excited to see what this looks like in operation. Um, we're gonna jump to that footage and you can see out of all four ports, we're getting a really decent amount of smoke uh, coming out. It's not, you know, spraying out, but it is certainly wafting energetically. And that pump is tied to the throttle. So the faster you go, the more smoke is generated, just like would happen in the real boat. <laughs> Last thing we got here, and I don't know uh, if this was fully installed at the last video, I don't think it was, but this is the CERN thruster, brushless power uh, in here that uh, drives the propellers that are inside the tubes, you'll see, and uh, it goes through a right angle gearbox. And that's all been fared into the hull and uh, is working really, really well. Let's jump over to the control box. I talked about earlier on. So this is the beginnings of the watertight main brains of the operation. There's lots of connections and ports that are need to be installed in here. But what I want to show you that we've got all rigged up and ready to go, um, in theory, if it'll work for us, I'll turn the radio on, and uh, is the sound module. Man battle stations torpedo. Man battle stations torpedo. Sound the general alarm. And we got some proportional throttle, which I'm not sure if we're going to use or not. So there you go. We got uh, sound in the boat. Um, we got smoke in the boat. We got periscopes in the boat. We got lights in the boat. We got radar in the boat. Now it's just a matter of tying it all together so that we can control it all from the transmitter as opposed to all of these uh, individual uh, you know, components and testers and holding wires together and that kind of thing. So we are getting close. Once this box is done, we're gonna be like 99% of the way there. We'll be moving on to some wet testing. So I hope you enjoyed this. We're sure having a fun time building this boat. Uh, it's a long process but it's gonna be worth it at the end. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe so you know when the next updates come out. Uh, like and subscribe helps us out a lot here at the Dry Docks. We appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by and we will catch you next time.